Hello and welcome to lesson three in the warehouse management configuration course, warehouse item setup. In this lesson, we're gonna review the common item references like the storage dimension group, tracking dimension group, and then we'll review the new concepts in the warehouse management module like the inventory status, license plates, unit sequence group, reservation hierarchy, and the product filters. Configuring the advanced warehouse management item is not that different compared to the normal inventory items, except for some new options. So when you define an item in the warehouse management module, this item should be linked to item model group, item group, tracking dimension group, and a storage dimension group. But when it comes to the storage dimension group, you should configure it in a way that used the advanced warehouse management process. And when the use advanced warehouse management process is enabled, then you should track the items in some new inventory levels like the locations, license plates, and inventory status. In the warehouse management module, you should also link the items to reservation hierarchy and unit sequence groups. So before implementing or configuring the warehouse management module, you should be aware of the new concepts. Now let's get started by the commonly used dimension groups that are required for the standard inventory items and also for the advanced warehouse management items. The first one is the storage dimension groups. The storage dimension groups are managed and control the storage levels of the inventory. In the normal inventory flow, you can define items that only have storage dimension levels like site and warehouse, or maybe site and warehouse and location. But when it comes to define an item that will be used the advanced warehouse management process, you should ensure that this item is linked to storage dimension group that has use warehouse management process option is enabled. When the use warehouse management option is enabled, then all the inventory levels in the storage dimension group will be enabled. So here, when you enable this option, the site, warehouse, location, inventory status, and the license plate will be enabled. The tracking dimension groups manage and control the tracking levels of the inventory. So you might track the items by batch number or serial number or post together. If you are not tracking your inventory by batch or serial, then you should create a tracking dimension group called none, where nothing of the tracking dimension levels are active. Configuring the tracking dimension groups in the warehouse management is not different compared to the standard inventory flow, except for some options concerning uh, the blank issue and blank receipt, where you can configure the tracking dim dimension group to capture the serial number like with the picking process and backing process and so on. Now let's move to the new concepts and levels in the warehouse management module. The first one is the inventory status. And the inventory status is one of the storage dimension group levels or dimensions. The inventory status can be used in general to categorize the status of the items to available and unavailable. So you can create unlimited number of the inventory status that represent the possible inventory status in the organization. So here, for example, I have inventory status that represents the status of the available items and another one for the damage. You can also use the inventory blocking option to block the items that have an available inventory status. After you define the inventory status, you can set the default inventory status on multiple levels so the system can direct the items to the correct way or the correct location. The system used the default item status on the item level to assign the initial inventory status. If no default status is set on the item level, then the system used the default status set for the warehouse level, then the site level, and finally the global inventory status uh, defaulted in the warehouse management parameters. Now let's see how to define and manage the inventory status. Inventory status found in warehouse management module, setup, inventory, then inventory status. When you navigate to the inventory status form, you will see here the inventory status code and name and the option of inventory blocking. The option of inventory blocking indicates that the on hand associated to this inventory status should be blocked or no. So here we have inventory status called available that represents the available on hand 
and another one called damage it where the inventory blocking option is enabled this means that the on hand associated to this inventory status will be blocked now let's create a new inventory status. I'm going to create new inventory status for the QMS process that indicates that the items is still under inspection. And I'll enable here the inventory blocking options. So for example, for the initial receiving of the goods, I'll receive the goods with the status of QMS. So the own hand will be blocked until I complete the quality management process. After defining the inventory status, let's see how to default the inventory status. So the general place where you can default the inventory status is in the warehouse management parameters. So here you can default the inventory status on the module level. So I'll set here the default inventory status is available. And here you can also uh, enable this option to default the inventory status on the sales order level and the transfer order level. So I'll enable this one as well. Then you can also default the inventory status on the site level. So here you can also default that. And the next place on the warehouse level where you can default the inventory status on the warehouse level. Another place where you can default the inventory status on the item level with some combination here in the uh, warehouse management module, setup, inventory, then default item status. You can use the default item status to default the, the inventory status on the item level with combination to vendor or a customers. So here, for example, I can default uh, inventory status of the HDMI cable item with the vendor of global technology. And I'll set here the default inventory status to QMS. This means that next time when I purchase this item from that vendor, the default inventory status will be QMS. The second new level in the storage dimension group is the license plate. License plating is a method of grouping and managing the inventory in a form of a container. This container could be a carton, box, or any physical container. A typical form of the license plate is the physical ballot, where a quantity of the same item is, is placed on a ballot, and a license plate identifier is assigned to that ballot. The license plate ID provides a convenient way to view the inventory balances by ballot and increase the efficiency of the receiving movement and picking process. This would be helpful, especially for the serialized or the batch controlled items where you can place multiple batch numbers or multiple serial numbers on the same physical ballot. Think about a ballot of mobile phones that contains 50 boxes where every box contains 10 mobile phones, where each mobile phone has a unique serial number. What if this ballot should be moved from location A to location B? Normally, the warehouse worker will have to scan all the items in this physical ballot. So the warehouse worker will have to scan each mobile phone in the ballot in order to move it from location A to location B. However, using the LPN or the license plate number, the warehouse worker can move the entire ballot by just scanning the license plate number. So the warehouse worker can move the entire ballot from location A to location B in a single scan. The unit sequence groups. The unit sequence group defines the physical handling units of the items that can be used in the warehouse management process and the sequence of the units when the warehouse works are generated. Think of an item that is handled and is stored by multiple units like eaches, boxes, and ballots. But this item is sold by eaches. The unit sequence group could help the warehouse picker and enhance the picking process by generating warehouse works in different units and in sequence. Like how many ballots in that order, then how many boxes, then how many eaches to fulfill the order quantity. In addition to that, you may use the unit sequence groups to default the unit of measures on the order level. 
So using the unit sequence group, you can specify the default unit for purchase, transfer, production, and material consumptions. You can also use the unit sequence groups to default the container types per unit. We're going to review this process in details in the packing process. You can also use the unit sequence groups to determine and specify which units will be used in the cycle count process. So you can specify, for example, that the warehouse will be counted first in pallet, then boxes, then each. Also, one of the significant use of the unit sequence groups is the license plate grouping. And license plate grouping means when a new license plate will be generated and how the quantity will be grouped into one license plate. For better understanding on how the license plate grouping works, let's see this example. Think of an item that managed by three unit of measures, pallet, boxes, and eaches, where one pallet equal five boxes and one box equal 10 eaches, so one pallet equal 50 eaches. The three unit of measures configured on one unit sequence group. Unlike what we'll see shortly in the demonstration uh, on how to create a unit sequence group, it should be created in a way of sequence. So I'm starting here from eaches, then boxes, then pallets. When it comes also to configuring the license plate grouping, it configured per unit level. So here I'm creating multiple scenarios for better understanding on how the license plate grouping work. Now think of a purchase order of 100 eaches, where the license plate grouping is enabled on eaches and on boxes. So when the warehouse clerk will receive the 100 eaches, it will be received in two ballots. The first ballot has 50 unit, uh, 50 eaches, and the second ballot contains the remaining 50 eaches. According to our setup, we are not grouping the quantity on the pallet level. So in that case, two new license plate will be generated for each ballot. In the second example, I have a purchase order of uh, 85 each with the same license plate uh, grouping. So in this, in this scenario, one license plate will be generated for the pallet of 50 uh, each and the remaining 35 each will be uh, received in another license plate. Now let's think about another scenario. Uh, again, we're uh, 100 each, but here I'm grouping only on the each level. So when the warehouse worker will receive the 100 each, this will be received in two ballots, then two new license plates will be generated for each ballot. In the latest scenario, and this is a bit is a complicated or, or a uh, comprehensive scenario, here I have 85 each where the grouping is only on the each level. So when the warehouse worker will receive this, 50 each will be received in a pallet and a license plate will be assigned to that pallet. And then three boxes will be uh, received. Each box contains 10 each. And since I'm not grouping on the box level, so three license plate will be generated for each box. And the remaining three each will have a separate license plate. Now let's see how to manage and define unit sequence groups. The unit sequence groups found in warehouse management module, setup, warehouse, then unit sequence groups. So right now I'm gonna create a new unit sequence group for a group that contains the unit of measures of each, boxes, and ballots. So I'm gonna click new and I'll give it a unique ID. So this will be each box and ballot and the name is each box and ballot. When you configure the unit sequence groups, you should specify or start from the smallest unit. So the first unit is each, then box, then ballot. The next step is to uh, specify the license plate uh, grouping. So I'm going to group the license plate on the uh, each and box levels. That means 
the quantity that less than valid quantity will be grouped in a license plate. Then the unit uh, for cycle count. So this option will specify the units that will be used in the cycle count process. So I'm gonna select here valid and box and each. This means when the warehouse is being counted, the warehouse will be counted uh, in the ballot, then in boxes, then also to uh, specify the quantity or the counted quantity in each. Then you may also specify the default uh, unit for purchase and transfer. That's the default uh, unit of measures that will be used in the uh, purchase and transfer uh, process. You can also specify the default for production and the material consumption. Then you can also specify the default container type. This will be covered in details in the back lesson and the wave label type that will be covered also in the license plate and wave labeling. Reservation hierarchy. The reservation process in the warehouse management process is more flexible compared to the standard inventory flow. So using the reservation hierarchies, you can postpone the reservation on a specific inventory levels until the warehouse allocation is complete. So using the reservation hierarchy, you can define the sequence of reservations and dictate which levels will be reserved based on priority, such as the storage and tracking dimension group levels. In a warehouse management process, you don't have to specify all the inventory dimensions for an item in order to complete the reservation process, but instead, the reservation hierarchy will manage it. The reservation hierarchy works in a sequence. So in a uh, normal reservation hierarchy that contains the site warehouse inventory status location and license plate, the system works in a sequence. So when you perform the reservation, the system will reserve the items on the site, warehouse, inventory status level. And then when you release the order to the warehouse where the, uh, the warehouse allocation will be performed, then the location will be specified on the work level. So the warehouse worker can pick from a specific location. You can also specify the tracking dimension group levels when you configure the reservation hierarchy, but still it's not mandatory because it's not necessary that all the items will have serial, batch, or post together. It's important also to know how the reservation hierarchy works with the tracking dimension group. So basically the reservation hierarchy works with the concept of the cutoff. So basically the location is the cutoff. So any level above the location will be reserved when you reserve the order and all the levels after the or below the location will be reserved as part of the inventory allocation later when you release to warehouse. So in the manufacturing industry, for example, it's necessary to reserve or to pick the raw materials from the locations using the concept of first expire, first out, FIFO. So in order to enforce the system to first reserve a specific batches that will be expired first and then to force also the warehouse pickers to pick that uh, batch that will be expired first from the warehouse you should configure the reservation hierarchy in a way that the batch number is above the location this means when the order is reserved the batch will be reserved at this moment for other industries where the tracking dimension group levels like batch or serial is not necessary to reserve a specific batch or a specific serial, you can configure the reservation hierarchy in a way where the serial or the batch below the locations. So this means when you perform the reservation, the serial and the batch will not be reserved at this moment. So for example, you are selling a mobile phones. It's not necessary to reserve a specific serial uh, number. So in that way, the system will reserve the uh, mobile phone on the site warehouse inventory status level. And then uh, after the releasing the order to the warehouse, when the location will be specified on the warehouse work, then the warehouse worker can pick a serial that available in that location that has been uh, specified. Now let's see how to manage and define the reservation hierarchy. So the reservation hierarchy found in warehouse management module, setup, inventory, 
than reservation hierarchy. I'm going to create a new reservation hierarchy right now for the raw material items. So I'll click new and I'll give it a, a unique ID, raw material batch. So this would be raw material batch above. So this means that uh, the batch will be part of the reservation hierarchy and it will be above the location. This means when the order will be reserved, the batch will be also reserved at this at this moment. So the warehouse worker will be forced to pick uh, the specified batch. So when you work with the reservation hierarchy, you will find here the available list and the selected list. The selected list. Uh, this will be the inventory dimensions or the tracking dimensions that will be associated to this reservation hierarchy. So indeed, the, uh, all the uh, dimensions are not mandatory. So I can right now move the owner and serial number, for example, from this selected list to the available list. So I'm only using the site, warehouse, inventory, status, location. These are the, uh, and the license plate, these are the mandatory uh, mandatory levels and the batch number. So in order to make the batch number above the location, then you may use this arrow to move the batch above the location. So right now I have batch above the location for this reservation hierarchy. Click OK. And that's it. Now we're ready to create our first item in the warehouse management module. As normal while creating a new item, there are groups that should be specified on the item level, like the item model group, item group, storage and tracking dimension groups, and the required unit of measures. But when it comes to a storage dimension group that has the use warehouse management process, there are several more fields or groups become required, like the reservation hierarchy, unit sequence group, the unit conversions in case of the unit sequence group has different unit of measures, and the filters that we will clarify it in the next slide. Now let's move to Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management to create our product. In order to create a new product, I'll navigate to Product Information Management Module, Products, Released Products, and then I'll click New. Here the product number automatically filled according to the number sequence configuration. Then the product name, I'll give it a name, TV 50 inch. Then I'll select uh, item model group of uh, weighted average for WMS item. It's a normal item model group that has inventory model weighted average, but I'm just creating a specific item model group to be able to configure the uh, reservation configuration for the WMS items. So here I have the item reservation. I have the item uh, reservation is automatic. Then I'll select item group finish product. Then the storage dimension group is WMS, the group that we just uh, created. And if we check also the storage dimension group, it has use warehouse management process enabled. That's why all the inventory levels have been enabled or active. Then considering the fact that I'm not tracking this item by batches nor serials, so I'm going to select the tracking dimension group none. If we also check the tracking dimension group none, it has nothing active. Then I'll select the reservation hierarchy default. If we check also the default, we'll see here that uh, this uh, default reservation hierarchy has the required levels like site, warehouse, inventory status, location, and license plate. Then I'll keep the unit of measures uh, each is, then OK. Then we'll be moving to the product details form, where I should be able also to select the unit sequence group. So the unit sequence group would be each is. And if I check this unit sequence group, it has only one unit each, where license plate grouping is enabled. So we are ready right now to use this item, and that's it. The product filters. The product filters are used to categorize the inventory items in the warehouse. So you may use the product filters to categorize the items that have the same item characteristics or the products that require the specific handling or special storage conditions. 
There are out of the box 10 predefined filter titles that you may use them to apply different product filters on the item level. So for example, you may categorize the heavy products. So these products will be placed in a location in the first floor in the warehouse. Or maybe you can categorize a group of items. So these group of items will be directed to a specific area in the warehouse. Now let's see how to manage and define the product filters. The product filters found in warehouse management module, setup, product filters, then product filters. Here in the product filters form, you will find here the filter code. The filter code is a unique identifier of the filter value. Then we have the description of that value. Then we have the filter title. Each filter code should be associated with a filter title. As clarified earlier, there are out of the box 10 predefined filter titles. We can consider the filter title as the main categorization of the filter code. So here, for example, I'm using code number one as a product family filters. So the values associated with code number one are home appliances, computers, gaming, mobiles, and tablets, and so on. Then I'm using code number two to differentiate and categorize the items into small items and large items. Then I'm using code number three as item group. So here I have, for example, air conditions, heaters, fans, televisions, and so on. Now let's create a new product filter code. So in order to create a new filter code, I'll click new, and then I'm gonna create a new code for the cables. So I'll give it a unique ID cables. Then I'll link this to code number three, and then in the description, I'll call it also cables, and then save. The product filters work along with the item groups. So in order to specify which filter titles will be required and should be specified on the item level, then we can manage it from the item groups. Now let's navigate to the item groups. So the item groups found in inventory management, setup, inventory, then item groups. Then I'll select the finished product item group. After that, in the warehouse tab, filter required, I'll mark use filter code one, two, and three. So this will ensure that after item creation, the user should specify the filter code values of code one, two, and three. Now let's go back to the product that we just created in order to fill the required filter codes. So I'll navigate back to the release the product form and I'll open up the TV product that we just created. And then in the warehouse tab, I can fill the product filter codes. So in the code number one that represents the product family, I'll select here the home appliances. Then in the code number two, I'll select the heavy products. And then if I give it a try right now and save, then this message will pop up stating that all required filters are not specified. And this is due to the, the logic that we required the use filter code one, two, three as required. So the user must specify the three values. So if I go right now to the code number three and select here TVs and then save, then I will be able to save. One of the significant uses of the product filters is to direct the products to a specific location or area in the warehouse. So in our example, the heavy products should be placed on the first floor for easy handling. In order to manage this requirement, then you should configure location directive rules with filter criteria based on filter codes. So in this example, you should select heavy in filter code number two to ensure that this will be placed in the first floor. And then you should select TVs in filter code number three to ensure that this will be placed in the zone that has the TVs. Now imagine that you have many filter codes. It would be difficult to maintain the filter criteria for different products. However, using the product filter groups, system can group the filter codes together and give it a group name. So you can use this group code to filter the product instead of using every filter code individually. So for example, if a product has filter code number two equal heavy products and filter code number three equal TVs, then it will be grouped under a group called heavy TV products. Now let's see how to manage and define the product filter groups. I'm gonna create right now a new product filter group that represents the heavy TV products. 
in order to create a new product filter group, I'll click new. Then I'll give the group number one the name of heavy products and the group number two. Then in the details sections, we're gonna define the product filter codes. So when these codes will be matched together on the item level, then the group number one and group number two will be defaulted on that item. So let's click new. The first thing, we can manage this matching criteria based on a start date and end date time. So this filter criteria will be only effective within this time range. Then we're gonna select here the item group. So I'll select here this item group finished product. So this criteria will be only valid for the items linked to item group finished product. And then we're gonna specify the code values. So in the code number one, if you remember, the code number one was represent the product family. So actually in this scenario, the code number one is not relevant or necessary for the filter code. So I'll skip it. But in the code number two, I'll select here the heavy because we are targeting the heavy products. And in the code number three, I'll select TVs. So now we did the configurations of the product filter groups, but still we have an important step on the item group level to specify which codes will be used in order to determine the value of group number one and group number two. So here in our example, the value of group number one and group number two will be only updated when the user select and specify these specific values of code number two and code number three, regardless the fact if the user select other codes like code number one, four, five, and so on. In order to configure this step in the item group, I'll navigate to the item groups. And here I'll select the item group of finished product. Then in the item group filter, I'll select assign filter code two and assign filter code three for the item group. Now let's navigate back to the release the product form to evaluate the setup of the item groups along with the product filter groups. So I'll navigate back to the release the product form and then again in the warehouse tab, I'll start filling the product filter codes and see how the group of the filter codes will be updated. So here in the code number one, I'll select home appliances. Still, the groups have not been updated. Then in the code number two, and this is one of the mandatory groups, I'll select heavy. And then in the group number three, I'll select TVs. Once I select the value of TVs, then the group number one has been updated to be heavy products. And the group number two has been updated to be as expected. So for further validation, let's give it a try and it change the value of code number two from heavy to small. When I set it to small, then post values have been cleared out. Another good use of the product filters is to limit or restrict the items for a specific vendors or customers. So you may use the product filters to specify which items can be purchased from a specific vendor or vendor group. And you can also specify which items could be sold to a specific customer or customer group. So for example, I'm considering the fact that the exported products could have different ingredients or maybe different packaging material or different labeling formats. So you may have to restrict the exported products to be sold only to the foreign customers. Now let's see how to implement this scenario. So first I'll navigate to the product filters form in order to define the new filter codes that could be used to differentiate between the local products and the exported products. So in order to define a new filter code, I'll click new. And here I'll give it a name of exported products. And then I'll map this to code number four. And then new to define another one for the local products. Also, I'll link this to code number four, local market and then save then i navigate to the products that i have so here in the tv 50 inch product and underneath the uh, warehouse fast tab in code number four i can specify that this is exported product and then i have another product hdmi 6 cable and specify that this is allowed for the local market 
The next step in the configuration is to enable the customer or the vendor filters. So in order to enable the customer filters, I'll navigate first to the warehouse management parameters, then product filters, then I'll set enable customer filters to yes. Here you can enable the customer filters or vendor filters or post together. Now let's navigate to the sales order and see how this configuration will influence the order creation process. So if I navigate to the sales order right now, this is a local customer, United Group. So let's click Add Line and then select one of the local products. So I'll select the HDMI cable. So I got this error message. This product cannot be sold to the customer due to the product filter settings for this customer. And this is due to the fact that we didn't map or specify that this local item is allowed for this local customer or customer group. And now the question, how to manage and define the relation between the customers and the allowed products using the product filters? Actually, there are multiple areas where you can manage this relation. I'll start first from the customer form. So here in the customer form, on the customer tab, then setup, then product filters, I'll click new. So first, here you can specify which item groups will be allowed for this customer. You can also manage this, uh, this criteria using a start date and end date. So it will be only effective within this time range. So first I'll select the item group. So I'll select finish product. Right now, if I'll save, this means so far that all the products in the item group finish product is allowed for this customer but also respecting the configuration that in the item group I specified to use filter code number four. This means that code number four is mandatory and should be specified. So here I must select the code number four. So here I'll select local. This means that the local products will be allowed for this customer. So if I go back right now to the sales order and reselect this product once again, then it could be saved. The next area is the customer groups. So here in the customer groups form, I can also link the customer groups to the product filters. So for example, this is customer group number four, which groups the foreign customers. I'll click here, product filters, and then new. Then I'll link this customer group to item group finished product, but I'll select here in code number four, I'll select exported. So this means that all the customers that related to this customer group number 40 export can purchase the exported products. The next area is the generally available products. So you may use the generally available products form in order to define the items that are generally available for all customers or vendors or post together. So the generally available products form found in warehouse management module, setup, product filters, then generally available products. So in this scenario, we're going to specify that all the local products are allowed for all the customers. So I'll click new. Then I can specify a start date time. Here in the customer or vendor, you can specify if this is customer or vendor or all. So here in this scenario, I'll select uh, only customer. Then I'll select the item group finish product. And then in the code number four, I'll select local. So this means that any customer can purchase the local products, even if this customer is not mapped specifically to this item. Now let's recap what we discussed in this session. So this session was about the required configurations of the advanced warehouse management items. So in this session, we started first by configuring new storage dimension group that allow and enable the advanced warehouse management process. And then we discussed the new terms and the new levels that will be available when the option of use advanced warehouse management process is enabled. Then we discussed how to manage the inventory on hand on the inventory status and the license plate levels. Then we discussed how to manage and configure the unit sequence and the license plate grouping. 
Then we moved to the reservation hierarchy and the reservation sequence and the warehouse management module and how the levels that are above or below the locations could impact the reservation process and reservation levels. Then finally, we reviewed how to manage and configure the product filters and how to apply product filters on the item level and how to control the customer and vendor orders using the product filters. Thank you for watching and your time. Please reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.